Hey, what's up? Very late again. It's uh, just past midnight on Friday. Pretty bored. I uh, have a whole stack of CDs, some of which I've listened to extensively, some of which I've spun once or twice. Recent purchases, listening pile kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be talking about. My name is Pat. This is Ground Zero Salem. If you've been here before, you know the deal. If you're new, welcome. Welcome to Ground Zero Salem. Jamming out to some Blood Rock right now. This is Blood Rock 2, 1970, capital EMI. Uh, Fort Worth, Texas band that was not on my radar for the longest time. Um, fantastic hard rock group. Solid grooves, dirty grooving riffs, soulful vocals, some uh, Hammond keyboards going. So, yeah, some of this stuff, I mean, I've, I've been in possession of for almost a couple of months. Some just arrived earlier this week. All CDs on this one. I'm going to do a vinyl update separate. Um, first up, kind of the top of the heap here, one of the, one of the top picks is uh, Zemiel with Nyctia. Uh, I can't find it in the booklet, but I'm about... 98.5% sure this came out on Hell's Headbangers. Greek, uh, blackened heavy metal, progressive blackened heavy metal, I don't know. Um, not, to me, I, I've never, I've never heard a band that sounds really anything like this. Um, crisp, up in your face, kind of dry guitar sound, guitar tone. Um, weirdly kind of brings to mind Celtic Frost, but not really at all. There's pr proggy stuff going on with uh, almost like Moog-like sounding keyboards. It's wild. Um, one of my oldest friends that I've known through music, God, for well over 20 years now, um, who randomly texts me sometimes once a month uh, or s once every three or four months, just random sporadic texts with this dude, Matt, recommending me stuff or asking me for recommendations. Recommended that to me as well as a few other people. Uh, Eli and I think Marty recommended it to me and it's, it's fucking rad. It's great, great, great record. Um, another really good one. If you're not sick of me harping on about old Swedish death metal, you probably will be by the end of this. But this is uh, Fulmination Humanity's Dirge, a reissue that came out on The Crypt and Dark Descent. Surprise, surprise double disc deal with uh, all demos on disc one and then an unreleased album on disc two and great filthy Swedish death metal what you would expect from this reissue label and for the stuff I've been babbling about um, I guess the differences between this and a lot of other kind of demo level Swedish bands this was a little bit more simple and straightforward than a lot of the early Swedish stuff, it was a little bit more punk and a lot more catchy. Um, best way to put it, I guess. And there's a little bit more like kind of 80s thrash on it, but it still is grimy Swedish kind of death metal stuff. The uh, the unreleased record's really, really, really good. And surprisingly, the live songs on this sound perfect and are great. Sound better than some of the demo songs. The, the unreleased record though, um, music is fantastic. I hate the drum sound, not to fucking nitpick. And not to be the guy complaining about, you know, typewriter drums, but I'm going to be that guy. I like my drums to sound like drums. I'm not going to be a prick about it, but sometimes it's a deal breaker for me. Um, Residency Records in Salem had uh, some pretty affordable CDs. I just snagged a few. It's Carcass, Symphonies of Sickness. Arguably their best. I bought it because it has the collage art on it, and the LP I have doesn't. It has that thing on it, so don't need to talk about it, Symphonies of Sickness, absolute perfect record for death metal and grind. Um, speaking of grind, we got Rotten Sound Murder Works here, I need to spin this again, uh, I remember it coming out early 2000s, my roommates back in Maine when I lived there being uh, into this band a lot. I was kind of getting out of grind at the time and kind of getting more into stripped down fast hardcore, entering that phase of my listening diet. Um, but I remember thinking they were pretty good, and this sounds good. It's just this production style, this 21st century Nazami, Nazam the full length era kind of production. 
I don't know if it really does much for me. It's it's very upfront. It sounds almost kind of brick walled on purpose. Um, drums are kind of inorganic sounding. I just don't know if that kind of thing's my bag. The music is fucking great. Um, fantastic riffs, of course. Tight as a drum, sound wise, but um, I don't know. That's that's from like one or two listens. So uh, it was sooner or later that I'd I'd have to pull the trigger on some Deathspell Omega. And I got this record, which I'm not going to bother to try to pronounce. I will cheat and put it right there. It's pretty far along in the discography of this band. I don't remember. Is this a one-man deal or what? I have no idea. i um, been aware of Despel Omega for a long time. A friend of mine burned a data CD with a bunch of stuff on it and threw one of their records on it. Just haven't been in the mood for this kind of black metal up until a year or two ago, um, where I've just kind of started to dive in with the original heavy hitters and now getting more into, like, contemporary stuff. I do really like this. Um, with my rudimentary knowledge of this genre and all the influences going into it, it kind of sounds to me like Rebel Extravaganza from Satyricon. However, I'm not the biggest fan of that record. This kind of has the same weird kind of dissonant kind of vibes, but it sounds a lot more... I don't know, genuine or something. Um, there's a lot of uh, kind of off kilter, off tempo, almost kind of weird, like mathy kind of lead work in it that reminds me of like some really chaotic, noisy hardcore bands from the 90s, which um, I wasn't expecting. Uh, also, speaking of 90s and hardcore, this Life of Agony 89-99 to 99 compilation arrived a few days ago. I'm a huge Life of Agony fan. Um, I just, that stuff's in my blood. All the kind of metal and hardcore stuff that was prevalent in New York in the 90s, um, especially the bigger stuff on Roadrunner and bigger metal labels. Life of Agony were huge when I was a kid. Um, and I have a very, very big uh, spot in my heart for their stuff up until... I need to revisit Soul Searching Sun, but up until Ugly. They did start as a pure hardcore band um, in the late 80s, 89, and there's some demo stuff on here that is fantastic. It sounds like, kind of like Sheer Terror, kind of like Breakdown. It's uh, a lot heavier. Um, vocals are less sing-songy and grungy and more like kind of hard, although vocal chops are starting to come in. Uh, some interesting cover choices, March of the S.O.D. slash Sergeant D of the S.O.D. is on here. Done all slow all the way through, which I remember bummed me out so bad the first time I heard it. Now I'm into it. Um, we got uh, Tangerine by Led Zeppelin. Uh, Redemption Song by Bob Marley. So yeah, it's a mixed bag, going from the demo material that was real hard to some of the more melodic, kind of almost... Ver verging on uh, alternative stuff from Life of Agony. But uh, yeah, great. Dirt cheap. It was like $4 on eBay. Came out on Roadrunner sometime in the 2000s, I think. Cool live shots there. It looks like it's from the video for this time. I, I came across a bunch of um, a bunch of zines, magazines from that I picked up at Armageddon from uh, In Effect Hardcore that were all mid-90s stuff, so I've been kind of ODing on uh, interviews with, like, Inhuman and bands like that. Um, this is a No Redeeming Social Value CD, one of the bands that I decided to pull the trigger on, I listened to years and years ago and haven't thought about for a while. 40 Ounces of Hardcore on Triple Crown and Striving for Togetherness Records. Like, in the vein of the greats like Murphy's Law and Fun, Hardcore bands like that. Uh, a lot of it's really, really fast. There's a lot of like awesome dumb breakdowns. Songs about eating chicken. Um, your boyfriend's a Guido. You know, almost bordering on like crossover kind of goofiness. It's uh, it's a good time. I like uh, I like a lot of my music silly. You know, especially if it's like kind of violent sounding hardcore. Finally got around to snagging that second Sentinex record. That's a tough one to say. Malaeus Maleficarum. Uh, I don't know if these guys didn't get the memo that Pestilence had a record called that not that long ago. However, it's a fucking fantastic record. Uh, it's more that awesome Swedish, melodic, blackened death kind of stuff. 
that I've talked about before, Sacramentum, etc., early Marduk, yada yada. A uh, little bit deeper in the vocal department. Infectious fucking music. It's very, very fucking memorable. And it, it was a long it was a long gap between this their second and their first record that I talked about a few updates ago. But yeah, I uh, I'm completely enamored with this band right now, and I'm going to pick up more as uh, time progresses. I talked about this, or at least flashed it up to the screen briefly. This is a compilation of the first two Vomitory records, Raped in Their Own Blood and Redemption. It's a two-disc deal. Cool uh, art on the CD there. Um, a little less, like, busy and uh, just forceful wall of noise that the third one at record that I talked about is. It's a little bit more um, spaced out. It's a little bit more towards the traditional Swedish thing, but also way more brutal. Also very punk, too. There's like a, still sort of an underlying brutal, almost American death metal thing, and also more of like a crusty thing going on with it. I like it a lot. Uh, another recent band that I was like, where where the fuck have I been? This band was it's been around forever. Oh well. Um, another band that I, I come around to every couple of years, and it always feels like kind of a victory to me when I actually succeed, where I'm like, I know, I know that this band was important, <laughs> like, I know a lot of people love them and revere them, a lot of people whose musical tastes I respect, but they've never done anything for me, and I know I just need to go back. Um, one of those bands recently for me was, uh, Morgion. Um, I just tried buying their CDs a few times. I just needed to be in the mood for that kind of, like, Death Doom stuff. It clicked for me, like, a year or two ago, and I just completely all in on Morgion. Another happy, happy ending story of that sort of thing is Anathema with Serenades. I got Anathema, Serenades, and Pentecost 3. This is, uh, of course, a version that includes the Crestfallen EP. Something about it, um, about their style didn't click with me for years, and I'm talking going back to the 90s. I mean, they're part of the whole early Peaceville thing, the Death Doom thing, that a lot of people are rediscovering now, and all that. They didn't have the, uh, that harpsichordy gothic kind of thing that appealed to me about My Dying Bride, and they didn't have that grandiose, sweeping, there's an opera singer involved, you know, crushed by the wings of misery kind of fucking Paradise Lost thing. There was something kind of, like, outside of it, um, almost kind of more modern, um, like, like, modern goth, like, not actual gothic times, but, you know, cure kind of stuff going on, I don't know, it's hard to put into words why, what was different about these guys, they're, just, they're a little bit more highbrow, I feel like, or something, I don't know, something about Anathema did not click with me, um, until recently, I was like, you know what, I need to check these, uh, these folks out again, I listened to some stuff, streamed some stuff, and uh, really, really liked it. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, I get it now. Fucking 40 years old, been trying for 25 years or however long it's been, finally get Anathema. It's fucking great. Starkweather. This compiles the Crossbearer and Into the Wire records. Um, where to start with Starkweather? I've been a fan of that theirs for ages. Um, it's been said, and I don't think it's, uh, untruthful, that there wouldn't be a Converge without Starkweather, there wouldn't be a lot of modern metalcore, for better or for worse, without Starkweather. Um, they were a band that was in Philly, I think they started as early as 89, and, um, are still around. They've broken up and gotten back together a few times, and they had this crazy approach to vocals, a crazy approach to writing songs and riffs. It was very, very metal. And it might be one of those first examples of uh, kids that were predominantly involved in the hardcore scene trying their hand at straight-up metal and it coming out into this mutant sort of something else and something really, really good. Um, the vocals went from like a raspy, hoarse almost kind of demonic kind of thing that was one step away from maybe death or black metal 
to going to these really well sung clean vocals that just sounded completely pained and miserable they were a fantastic band and this compiles all their classic material it has the the two lps that i mentioned as well as seven inches contracts both of these cds are packed full of stuff and uh they've done some great stuff since then but this is all their classic material i think they called it a day for a little while and then came back quite a while ago now over 10 years ago and have done a bunch of records since then that uh, hold up to these but um I'll include links so you can check it out for yourself. My words do not do Starkweather justice. Tyrants of Hell is the next one in the pile. This came out on Von Frost um, on CD, and it came out on cassette on Caligari. And this is fucking fantastic, fun, fucking filthy, grinding death metal. Really uh, short songs. Um, there's some repulsion kind of vibes going on in there, um, some venom kind of kind of shit in the, in it as far as the influences go. You know, these guys are. It looks like is that? I think that's the back of a dump truck. I don't know what's going on there, but um, you know, not taking themselves too seriously. It, it doesn't seem like, but uh, also heavy as fuck and uh, not too too tight, but not falling apart either. And there's uh, yeah, there's a lot going on with that cover art there. Um, also, at, did I pick this up at, I didn't pick this up at Residency, I picked this up at Armageddon, uh, like you care. The first Leviathan record, the tenth sub-level of Suicide. Man, I don't know. Um, again, another one I need to spend more time with. Listen to this maybe twice. I know this is a legendary, uh, project for black metal, um, certain things about certain types of black metal that just don't make it just don't ring through to me don't resonate with me and uh i feel like this cd kind of embodies all of those although i, I could be wrong you know it's uh one listen two listens um i've given jeff whitehead stuff a shot before i had tentacles of horror years and years ago might have been when it came out that didn't do anything for me at the time, and I kind of chalked that up to me not really listening to any black metal at that time. Uh, I listen to a lot more now. Um, something about this is just completely unremarkable to me, and I don't exactly know why, but it could have been totally the mood I was in the day I listened to it. I only listened to it once, you know. Uh, have not spun this yet, but I have owned it in the past. Next is... Uh, Solitude Eternus Downfall. Um, the last record they did before a hiatus, a pretty long hiatus, if I remember correctly. When I was at Armageddon, I also picked up a bunch of old issues of Metal Maniacs. So that was a fun little time capsule. And I forget what guy in the band. It wasn't Robert Lowe. Might have been John Perez. One of the members was being interviewed about this coming out. It's you know, as promo for it, I would assume, and pretty much stated straight up that he wasn't happy with the way this record came out at all. Um, I remember it being okay, you know, it's really hard to compete with Beyond the Crimson Horizon, Into the Depths of Sorrow, all the records that came before it. But uh, I know it has some kind of like interesting twists and turns, it gets kind of proggy, I think. So I'm looking forward to spinning it when I finally get around to it. This was a reissue on Hammerheart. I think originally Downfall came out on, uh, I think it came out on Roadrunner, originally. Yeah, I thought I'd do myself a solid and flip over the record. Um, next up is Mind Eraser's Cave. Picked it up on CD. I do have the LP. It's one of those things I'd like to have on CD, too. It's got bonus tracks and that sort of thing has their uh, 2003 demo as bonus tracks. Um, Mind Eraser is a, one of those members of bands. Most everybody involved in this is, project was really talented. Uh, it's great power violence, added a little bit more to that traditional sound of that, wove in like a little bit of the early earache kind of thing, um, some like straight up youth crew hardcore here and there. They did a couple of LPs, um, a, Two, two song EP that was like way more sludge it was like one song on each side it was a 12 inch uh, they, they did a lot of stuff well, in, during their tenure and did a great job of it but yeah great fucking heavy band 
This is from a magic card on the back. I want to know who the member is that uh, likes to slap together a black and green deck and get down. Next up is Pro Fanatica's Enemy of Virtue compilation. You know, classic USBM. Ugly, nasty stuff. I had a lot of these demos on uh, a bootleg cassette that I bought, you, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that. Um, I'm not a Pro Fanatica fanatic, <laughs> uh, but I do like them a lot. I love how just ugly, nasty, and primal this stuff is. Fantastic fucking band, massively influential, as I'm sure you know. I would like to check out their um, post-reunion stuff. I heard that stuff is great, too. And this is a great little package, by the way. Um, looks like Hell's Headbangers put this out, too. But these great, like, Bible-looking pages with uh, all the discography information, what all the recordings came from, cool biography and all that. Next up, we got a, a hot one this year. A lot of kids are talking about it. A Feather and Bone. Bestial Hymns of Perversion. Again, still haven't spent that much time with this yet. Uh, it's very good. It's very uh, full frontal assault, assault style, like kicking your ass before you even know what's going on. Kind of black and death metal. Looking forward to spinning it more. I got this Damnatory discography. Complete Discoreography, 91 to 2003. <clears throat> Memento Mori put this out. It was, uh, this was a Swiss band. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of stuff you hear about from Switzerland other than Celtic Frost, Messiah, you know, all the usual sus suspects there. I haven't, I had never heard of these guys. And it's cool, it's really raw death metal. Um, kind of putrid sounding kind of, you know, uh, really raw, stripped-down guitar sound. There seems to be a lot of, you know, a lot of carcass influence like you would expect with anything with gore in the title. They were around in the 90s. Uh, I enjoy it. Nothing really stuck in my ribs too much with it, but, uh, you know, I'll give it more time. This is fucking awesome. Um, Cyst, the Frozen Casket. Reaper Metal put this out. Russian band. This is their demo with some bonus tracks from a few other releases. Um, if you like Skeletal Remains and you like the whole idea of worship of all that pestilence, Sepultura, early death, you know, that kind of shit, that thrash kind of traveling over into death metal territory from like 1990, that kind of stuff, these guys really give Skeletal Remains a run for their money and possibly kick their ass, and I really like Skeletal Remains a lot. I like that record um, immensely, but this is just, just fucking feral and fucking nasty, and I highly recommend it. This didn't really n blow me out of the water. This is a band called Eternal Lies from Sweden. It came out on a Mexican label, um, Chaos records. Chaos Records, who I ordered some other stuff from, including that Damnatory 7-inch, or Damnatory 7-inch, Damnatory CD. I don't, I don't know, I need, again, first two listens, uh, kind of thing. Really, really, really sterile drum sound, again, not to harp on that too much. Um, it's perfectly competent, workmanlike, melodic death metal. Um, a little bit more on the gruff, brutal kind of vocal style, but the music's very, you know, very melodic, you know, twin guitar stuff going on, all that. I, I don't know, man. Uh, it's, you know, I'll give it more chances, but it, it doesn't, it's not really doing anything for me. I don't know the pronunciation of this either exactly, but we'll just say reincarnation. And Metal Hecho and Medellin which uh, this compiles 888 Metal and a Combinelle a la Tumba. So, Colombian band. Uh, about as raw as it gets. This can be a rough listen if your ears aren't properly uh, calloused up. It's uh, chaotic, thrashy, black metal, early death metal kind of shit from South America. Re-released by Nuclear War now. I actually had a double LP of this 
ages ago, and I could not handle it at the time. It's it's straight up like practice and thrash, but it's awesome. Um, completely wild sounding. I love it now, but it took me a little while to develop a taste for it. But fucking very cool. All right, that's my collection update. You have a good night.